Hello everyone, I'm Paul McGuire Grimes. Director Matthew Vaughn brought Mark Miller's graphic novel, Kingsman, The Secret Service, to the big screen in 2014 to really huge success. It's now a full-on franchise as the third film, The King's Man, is a prequel taking us back to where it all started. It's now in theaters and I want to talk about it. This is Paul's trip to the movies. Ray Fiennes leads a new cast for the franchise as Orlando Oxford. He and his son Conrad, played by Harris Dickinson, are tasked to protect Archduke Franz Ferdinand of Austria. Now, they're not quite quick enough, though, leading the Archduke's assassination, which then reignites the feud between England, Germany, and Russia. Now, Orlando, Conrad, and their band of spies, played by Gemma Arterton and Jai Munhansu, must find this secret team of famous assassins who are behind the murder. They include people like Rasputin and Mata Hari. Now, I must admit that when they announced this film, I questioned why, given the fact that the sequel was such a bloated mess. Now, maybe Matthew Vaughn heard that criticism, which is then why he decided to then make this an origin story of sorts. But then even the trailer had me a little ho-hum. But it's always good to come out of a movie a little surprised at the final product. Vaughn directed all three and co-wrote this one, and gives a bit of a different flair from the first two movies. And as you can probably figure out, this hits that genre of revisionist history. Now, Vaughn touches on multiple ideas and tones here, as he then opens the film in 1902 with the South African concentration camps. He then later finds Conrad in the trenches of World War I. Now, I wouldn't call this film a war movie, though, as Vaughn still hits at that action comedy tone. It's those scenes that actually work the best, even when they're just completely ridiculous. Reese Ivins is a riot as Rasputin. He's messy, violent, and incredibly horny, which I didn't expect. There's this intimate scene with Oxford fighting Rasputin without his pants on. Now, Vaughn does his best when he's just paying homage to the genre, and there are some fun needle drops adding into that. Now, the more serious side of the film comes with this father-son story, with Conrad wanting to prove himself to his dad, despite Oxford's fear for his son's safety. Now, there's a lot going on in this film, much like we saw with the first two movies, but Vaughn still has a few surprises up his sleeves, with a few jaw-dropping moments and a villain reveal that's safe for the very end. Now, he creates some good action sequences and scenes of peril, even if that comes with this over-reliance on CGI just to pull it all off. Now, that's nothing new for action movies these days, I get it, but it still looks a little too obvious for The King's Man. The prequel, though, is still entertaining, and it's an improvement over the sequel, but both have never been able to live up to that fresh and unique quality that the first movie had. But I'm giving The King's Man three out of five ticket stubs. If you like my review today, click subscribe on my YouTube channel to get some other movie reviews, as well as my appearance on Twin Cities Live. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Twitter, at Paul's Movie Trip, and then go to my website, paulstriptothemovies.com, for even more reviews. Thank you so much for watching my review of The King's Man. This is Paul's trip to the movies.